I'm gonna test this real quick and just see what the difference is between that air to air intercooler and this water to air intercooler. Very interesting. I promise you, you're gonna be surprised. engines i'm steve now uh i got something a little bit different here for you because uh again kind of run through rashes of these and every once in a while now this is a pretty good small box chevrolet it doesn't look like a whole lot but it actually is and i got to um I'll go over the engine build stuff with you and some tuning stuff on a blow through carburetor now this is an existing combination uh that he's uh customers had for quite a few years so we did a new long block for it uh, it's block crank rods uh, and cylinder heads and uh, then still using his intake and blow through carburetor and blower so that's an f2 blower right there and then you see just regular uh, msd ignition system pretty simple stuff now this is a, a carb shop carb and they actually work pretty darn good you can see this is one of our blower hats now, back in the day, all I ever used to do was blow through carbureted stuff. Uh, obviously, things changed, and now it gets to be more of a rarity to do blow through carburetor stuff, but I'll talk to you about the blow through carburetor stuff after we make a pull. But uh, this engine is, uh, like I said, small box Chevrolet. Uh, this is a 400 cubic inch and a big snout crankshaft. So, one thing that you guys always need to keep in mind on a small block Chevrolet and any type of blower motor, what we'd always like to do is put a big block post on it. So a big block post means that the snout that the balancer rides that goes on is actually big block Chevrolet diameter, bigger diameter than the small block Chevrolet diameter. Because uh, very common on any of these small block Chevrolets with a standard small block Chevrolet post or snout, uh, they'll break off. They flat out will break off or they'll shear the keyways in them and spin. Uh, so either way, that's super bad. More bad if they break off. So we put the big black snout on it. That really helps that thing out. Uh, this thing is still a, uh, a steel rod. So I mean, you got three and three quarter inch stroke. Still has a six inch steel rod in it. Um, I'll look, I can't remember what rod it is. And then our piston and rod, or I'm sorry, our piston package, which is um, we do all of our custom piston packages the same. They're all hard anodized. They all have a AP steel ring pack in them. So steel rings, uh, I don't do zero gaps. If you ever want to figure out why I don't want to do a zero gap ring, go to my Steve Tech videos and uh, piston ring design and you'll see why, because I'll talk about that. Um, uh, 10 to one compression ratio uh, running on C16. I'm sorry, Q. Q16, we actually got it on C16 right now and I'm gonna convert it over to C and then I'll go through the carburetor with you on what the changes are that need to happen for C16 versus Q16. Now, the other interesting thing is, uh, we're gonna run this all exactly like this because this is water air intercooler, so obviously it doesn't have it set up like this. This is just our dyno setup. So I have my big water to air intercooler. We use a big ice bucket here, ice and water bucket. And We'll show you what all the numbers are for here. But the one thing that is really interesting that I'm gonna show you is I had my guys, which are really good here, I had my guys set everything all up and they'll get the engine started and running for me and then I come in and do the tune work. Well, I was gone down to uh, Cletus McFarland's shop working on his stuff and so they set this all up and when I came back, they had it written on the paperwork wrong they didn't have the water to air intercooler on it. What they had on it was this little air to air intercooler. Now, I see this little air to air intercooler and my first thought was, when I saw it, I go, what the fudge? That thing looks like crap. That cannot be right. And then look up the paperwork and figure everything out. It's like, oh, this thing, somebody just looked up the wrong thing and put the wrong intercooler on it. Cause this is my intercooler. This is my intercooler. I got lots of intercoolers, I got lots of headers, lots of all sorts of stuff. And uh, it was just terribly connected. Usually the guys do a real good job, but it just had all these 
blower had this 90 here, 90, 90, 90, 90, and then coming up to the carburetor hat, and it just was like crap. And I said to myself, I thought, you know what? I am just, I'm gonna test this real quick and just see what the difference is between that air to air intercooler and this water to air intercooler. Very interesting. I promise you, you're gonna be surprised. But first off, let's go ahead and uh, we'll run this thing um, and I'll show you uh, numbers through here, give you some little bit of tune up information and I'll show you how these blow through carburetors really work. So let's take a look at our numbers here. Get the screen all ready. Is that? Yeah, pretty darn good. Like really darn good. It is making a lot of beam. Um, so what I want to show you. So that is seventeen ninety five. Oop, and I got to put the correct text up here so this is see i had up here the uh small intercooler but this is not the small intercooler this is the big water to air intercooler here in a little bit i will show you all the small uh intercooler difference in fact i'll, I'll show that to you now and then we'll go in and we'll do tuning on the carburetor so big intercooler uh 1315 in torque up at 6600 um, but that is some really good looking horsepower right through there now let me uh let's see what kind of boost it's at boost we are at 30 oh, we're gonna be pretty good up there 33 pounds of boost so we're getting right after right up there at uh, 33 uh, oil pressure is looking great o2s are looking really nice that one's maybe just a skosh at 12.73. So our average was 12.61, 12.69. That's actually pretty, pretty, nah, that's pretty good on a, on a C16 fuel, which is what this has in it right now. So now let me show you the, let me get the camera fixed up here for you. Let me show you the uh, difference is crazy. So let's see here, uh, graph and clear. Okay. History log. There we go. All right. This is identical in fact let's go in there and i'll show this to you again because it's very interesting so like i said my guys had the wrong intercooler set up on here and not only was it air to air it was the small air to air just that little guy right there all right now these things everything in the world can also relate back to basic plumbing if there is a 90 degree angle in anything it is a restriction period period it is so there's a 90 there there's a 90 down there there is uh and those are sharp 90s which are even worse so i mean it's not a smooth radius 90 if it's at least a smooth radius 90 they're better um and then it had uh a big tight 90 right here which was crazy um just was just a terrible looking setup i wish i would have taken a picture of it but i forgot so anyways put on all four inch tubing all the way through here and if you looked at that video uh, go back and you can see it is <laughs> scary because this intercooler literally moves towards the wall because it's it's uh, uh, extending out, it's stretching the silicone connectors all the way through. It's crazy. But anyways, so small, wrong intercooler. So small, wrong intercooler to the big, correct intercooler. Uh, major, major difference. 
All right, so now what I'm gonna do is we're gonna, this is on C16, we're gonna convert this over to uh, Q16. Now Q16 typically runs about 5% leaner, so we'll add some fuel to the carburetor. Uh, so I'll actually, we'll just add some jetting to it and uh, then we will uh, make another pull on the Q16, see what kind of horsepower it makes. I don't ever really expect to see much different and you know, at this horsepower level, you know, I'm always happy if it just repeats, to tell you the truth. So anyways, I'm going to uh, uh, go in here and we'll now give you a little bit of tech on the carburetor side of things here. Okay, first thing, on a blow through carburetor, any kind of big horsepower application. Now, you can see this thing just made 1800 horsepower, 1795, really good horsepower. I mean, that that is, that is probably that, I mean, you can make more, but I like to not make more in these applications. It just is a safer place to be. But as you can see here, now this is a, an older carburetor and see you got some staining inside the, the bowls. These are a billet bowl deal dual needle and seat bowl, okay? So what you see is they actually have two inlets for each uh, side of the carburetor and you'll see it has two floats, okay? There's a float and there's a float. So a dual needle and seat uh, front and rear, four actual inlet lines. Now some of them will use one inlet line and then share a fuel channel, which is fine. Uh, this one uses four individual uh, fuel lines. Now, let's go over here. Now, how uh, these carburetors end up moving fuel. If you notice, let's see if I can get it on there. Let's see, is that, uh, whoops, 74. All right, so 74. That has a 74 jet in it. This in the back is an 82 jet. How does it flow that much fuel to make that kind of horsepower? Easy. This has boost reference power valves. You see this whole little power valve assembly right here in the center, right there? What that is is a spring loaded from behind and it changes the channels in the carburetor so that it receives a boost signal to here, which opens up the channels behind it. So instead of having um, like the normal size would be 10 jet sizes is a power valve equals about 10 jet sizes. Here, the boost reference power valves, which open up at different rates. You can make them open up at different rates by changing the spring pressure, but in general, they open up around 10 pounds of boost. So, uh, but these will add about 20 plus jet sizes, sometimes even more. So different carburetors, different companies do it differently. But that's how you're moving all this extra fuel is through a boost reference. They open on boost, not on vacuum. So a normal power valve opens on vacuum or the lack of vacuum. These open up on boost. Okay. So <clears throat> that's how you're moving all this extra fuel. Now, the carburetors are simple. Okay. In fact, they're so simple. Um, I can't even get my son who is 21 years old. Uh, that I've trained how to do EFI tuning and who's learning how to do more EFI tuning. He doesn't even want to mess with the carburetor because he thinks they're too complicated or that they're too old school or something. I don't know. But they're very simple. And here is how a carburetor works. It moves fuel. I'm sorry. It moves air through the carburetor and sucks out fuel. That's it. The more air you move, the more air that goes through these venturis, the more fuel it sucks out with it. It is as simple as that. So more air, more fuel. And very surprisingly, you could, a lot of times you can be really minimal in jetting differences because, and when you can change pulleys or combination, because when I pull a change a pulley, it is moving more air and when it moves air, it auto calibrates, basically, not literally, but auto calibrates to moving more fuel. 
Now, there's high, uh, low speed air bleeds, high speed air bleeds, intermediate air bleeds, annular booster, dog leg booster, aerosol booster. There's a whole bunch of little knickknack things in there, but I'm just giving you the straight out basics of why does this blow through carburetor work? And no, you don't have to have all these extreme jetting changes. And no, the this thing has basically has the equivalent of like a, oh, probably, little over 100 size in jets um and why does it be able to move that much fuel through there because it's moving that much air so really interesting there so what i'm going to do now is i'm just going to put uh, uh i'm going to jet up just actually just one number size just to give it a little bit extra for the q16 now q16 runs at a different brake number which means that it takes uh more fuel it runs leaner, so it takes uh, it takes a little more fuel to make the same amount of horsepower. Um, so I'm going to add just a little bit of jet. It should come back, make same kind of horsepower, and uh, everything will be just right dead on the money. So I'll probably just change this jet and really won't even bother joining that because that's not all that interesting. But really wanted to show you how a, these bigger blow-through carburetors work. Now. Before everybody gets all super excited, and I have to correct everybody on this, uh, it is, I do not like doing methanol carburetors. Everybody wants to make 3,000, 4,000 horsepower with a methanol carburetor because it's easy. Uh, well, the carburetor is easy, but it will not distribute fuel. You're just asking for problems. I no longer like to do anything over 2,000 horsepower with a blow through carburetor. Can you? Yeah, can you figure it out? Yeah, are you gonna hurt some parts? Probably. Uh, it is, anything's doable if you want to spend the time or money on it. But uh, there's a certain extent where uh, individual fuel per runner and individual cylinder trims and timing trims and everything is just so much more beneficial in big horsepower engines, you just can't get away from it. So there's some good tech on, uh, on carburetors, how that blow through carburetor works, um, how they work. Uh, the Boost reference power valves, that's what you're looking at in these things. Jetting, why it moves more fuel, because it moves more air. Uh, and really interesting information on too small intercooler versus a really good intercooler. Granted too, I mean, there is an air inlet temperature change in it too. So there's a little bit there, that's not too big a deal. And there is also a, uh, um, so obviously this will cool better, but that boost differential is really showing you what's going on. That's the major part. So anyways, uh, I think this is a real good piece. Um, if you have any more questions or you got any other, uh, any other questions, and uh, go look at my Steve Tech videos because I got a lot of information on there to get more specific on everything from uh, cylinder heads, valve jobs, balancing, pistons, rods, all that kind of stuff. So anyways, I am Steve Morris. Uh, remember, like, subscribe, and share to all your friends. Thank you. Have a good day. Well, I changed mine. I'm going to uh, I'm going to show you the difference in between the Q16 and the C16. Uh, because I know I'll get the answer or the uh, questions if I don't. So we're going to uh, plug in my intercooler here and we will make a uh, another pull on this thing with uh, Q16 and see what it makes.
what it looks like when you don't turn the fuel pump on. <laughs> so we'll come right back and do that. Just got to reset the uh, computer. But the uh, idiot me didn't turn on the fuel pump. Well, now let me turn the fan off here. It did pick up. It is pretty good. Let me just check our O2 because maybe I, I ended up being a little bit lean here. 1846. Look at the old pole. So it's a little little worse down here. You see it lost a little bit down here at 4,500, 5,000. Pretty much the same, identical up here. And then just gained up here at the top. So I bet you we're a little bit... Uh, probably a little bit leaner so let's see here report and let's see no actually no actually not so yeah so we have definitely picked up some there um not totally surprising sometimes you see a little bit more sometimes you see a little bit less now keep in mind too is that uh uh Q16 is specifically a intercooled fuel. Do not run Q16 in a non-intercooled hot air engine. Uh, there will be problems. It burns off, basically long story short, not the correct terminology probably, but it burns off octane. So <clears throat> it effectively lowers the octane, burns off the oxygen content in it. Uh, so if you're a hot air engine, non-intercooled, always use, um, you always want to use C16 in a hot air engine and Q16 or C16 in a uh, intercooled engine. Now, the other problem you find with this Q16 is it does tend to corrode parts and has some other issues. C16 is just like a super rock solid, rock steady, uh, superstar fuel. Just super safe, super easy to work on with parts and never does anything. Q won't work with some EFI injectors and does have a little bit of a corrosive properties to it and is not tolerant to heat so now we're done i think that's a pretty god darn good piece uh i'll guarantee you he's gonna like that oh and by the way just like i need to tell every single customer you don't go make a full pass on this thing you need to look at some data go run 60 foot look at data run 330 foot look at data Run eighth mile, look at data. Never go make a full pass until you've collected data to make sure that that engine is the same as it is in the car, or on the dyno as it is in the car. Always, always, always. You gotta have some data you're looking at. You can't just assume because I dynoed it and I tuned it here that it is ready to rock and roll. It's not, you always have to be cautious, safe, and test and tune uh, and look at data. So. Well, anyways, I am Steve Morse. This time, now we're really done.